Alright, lesson 4.3, a mixed and entire radical. So far this unit, we've kind of played around with what are rational and irrational numbers. And uh, radicals can fall into uh, both of those categories. And so now we're going to talk about uh, how radicals can be written in uh, two different kind of forms. All right, so let's get started here. Um, as we know, fractions can be written in many different ways. For instance, the fraction 4 over 16 uh, can be written as, let's say, 1 over 4, right, if you reduced it. If you multiplied both the numerator and denominator now by 2, you'd have 2 over 8. If you multiplied the first one by 3, you could have 3 over 12. If you multiplied the first one by 5, you'd have 5 over 20. And the list goes on, right? I could just add a, a 0 to the original one that I had. I could, um, I don't know, add 4 million. Or multiply it by 4 million and have 4 million over 16 million. These are all essentially the same fractions. That just goes on and on and on. So just as with fractions, we can do the same thing with radicals. All right, uh, We can write them kind of in, in different formats. So what we can say right here is the square root of 9 times 25 is equivalent to the square root of 9 times the square root of 25. Because if you take a look here, if I multiply 9 times 25, I get 225. And you'll note that that is one of our perfect square numbers. The square root of 225 is just 15. Well, take a look at what happens over here. If we take the square root of 9, we get 3. If we take the square root of 25, we get 5. 3 times 5 gives me 15. Both of those are, of course, the same. All right. Similarly, it works with cube root land. So, cube roots. Uh, I got a bigger one here, but the cube root of 8 times 27 does give you 216. And this one's uh, a large one. I don't necessarily want you to remember it. If you can, it's, it's useful. But the cube root of 216 turns out that it's just 6. Okay, so 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times 6 is 216. How I know that is, uh, let's say, 36 times 6. Well, I know 30 times 6 is 180, and 6 times 6 is 36. You just add those together. Well, let's take a look at these. Now, knowing our perfect cube numbers, which hopefully you're starting to get down pat now, the cube root of uh, 8 gives you 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3. And, of course, you'll see where I'm going here that that is 6. So it follows this multiplication property of radicals. And basically what it says is, whatever you have underneath the radical sign, you can split up as being A and B like so, and uh, you'll get the same solution. All right. Now, we can use this property, and we're going to use it quite a bit, to simplify square roots and cube roots that are not perfect squares or perfect cubes, but have factors that are. All right, let's turn to the next page. So a quick definition for you, and then we'll get into some examples. Um, this one will be a little bit shorter than our last lesson. So mixed radical. A mixed radical is a number written as a product of another number and a radical. So for instance, uh, we would say here's another number, the 2, and here's a radical, root 3. We would read that as 2 root 3. That's an example as a mixed radical. All right. An entire radical is a radical sign and simply just uh, and has the number under it. So basically everything is inside of the uh, radical. So we're going to be exploring of how this is actually equivalent to the square root of 12 in a minute here. All right? That would be an example of something that is an entire radical. So we're going to play around with some of these, and I think you guys will kind of enjoy this, believe it or not. So simplifying radical is entire to mixed. So these are all entire. Everything is underneath the radical. We want to try and make it mixed. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to look for perfect squares of 63. So we're looking for perfect square divisors of 63. So what we can do here is we can say that the square root of 63 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. All right. 
Now you always want to look for the biggest perfect square. And I can't tell you how important that little point is I said right there. Look for the biggest perfect square. In this one, it turns out that root 9 is the only perfect square that goes into it. But we'll look at uh, the next one where that's not necessarily the case. In any event, we know now that the square root of 9 is 3. So we can simplify this, and this would be your final answer, 3 root 7. If you took both your original question and this new one and put them into your calculator, you would find out that those are exactly the same. Let's try another one. This one we're going to do two different ways. I'm going to do it the, uh, the hard way first and then the easy way uh, second. Let's say when you start looking at this question, you notice, oh, okay, I know that 4 goes into 200. So you wrote it like this. You have the square root of 4 times the square root of 50. Okay, now you'd say, all right, I know that the square root of 4 is 2, and so my answer is 2 root 50. Well, first of all, this isn't simplified um, completely. It said simplify each radical. You haven't gotten there quite yet. How I know that is this new radical I have, root 50, it also has a perfect square number inside. It has the square root of 25. I could write as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And since we know that the square root of 25 is 5, then we can bring it outside of the radical. So we have 5 times 2 is 10, root 2. Now that is your final solution, but that is the long way home. Okay? Over here in blue, I'll show you a way you could have done it a little easier. If you had identified the largest perfect square, you'll see how many steps I would have saved. Well, I know that the square root of 200 can be written as the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. And simply the square root of 100 is 10. Root 2 as your final answer. You'll notice a lot less steps. Okay? So that's the way I would advocate that you try to do these ones. So, this is where I find some students really, really start having troubles when we get into cube root land. All right? We must now look for perfect cubes. So, to recall, your perfect cubes are these type numbers. All right? We're looking for some of those that divide into a 108. All right, so what I would do here is I'd take 108 and I'd divide it by 8 and see if that's going to work. It doesn't. Now I'll take 108 and try the next perfect cube, see if that one works. And of course it does. So what we can do is we can say that the cube root of 108 is actually equal to the cube root of 27 times we found out it's the cube root of 4. Make sure you have that little cube root sign here and here. It's important. We know the cube root of 27 is 3, so that 3 pops outside. And we have a final answer is 3 the cube root of 4. So I don't necessarily expect you to um, memorize all these perfect cubes, um, but I'm showing you a way that you can use your calculator to give you a hand. It's best if you can, um, but uh, there's other ways to do this. Next one we have is the cube root of 128. Well, the cube root of 128, you should be able to recognize pretty quickly that that's just 64 times 2. And simply, we know that the cube root of 64 is a 4. So my final answer is 4, the cube root of 2. All right. If you went and put this one and this one into your calculator, you would find out that they're exactly the same thing. Okay. So uh, down on the bottom here, I, I just have to make this process easier and reduce the number of steps. Always, always, always look for the largest perfect square inside each radical. Now I say perfect square, it could also be the largest perfect uh, cube. And in the years to come, we'll deal with the uh, perfect fourth root, and so on. All right, last examples. Now we're going to go backwards. So I want us to think, right, like I took, let's go back over here, let's say that first one. I took the um, root 63, and I simplified it to be 3 root 7. Well, now we're going to go backwards. Imagine I had 3 root 7, I want to go back to where I started. Well, what did that 3 used to be? It used to be a 9. So you're going to see how we're going to be putting these numbers kind of back inside, and how we do that is we just square them. Or if it's cube, we'll have to cube them. So what I'm saying for this one, what did this 7 used to be inside the radical sign? Well, it had to be 7 squared. So I can write this as root 49 times root 3, which is equal to just 1 less than 50. So 50 times 3 is 150. So I just subtract 3. That means it must have 147 okay. as your solution. Next one here, we're in cube root land. So remember, to put the 2 back inside here, you don't just square it. You're going to have to actually cube it or multiply by itself 3 times. So that's the equivalent of the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 4, which gives you the cube root of 32. Okay, aren't these fun? And now one to kick it up, just so, uh, so we know we can do it if we needed to. 
This is to the fifth root of 3. So that means that in order to put this 2 back inside here, you have to multiply 2 by itself 5 times. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Lastly, one more time, times 2 is 32. So this is the fifth root of 32 times the fifth root of 3, which gives me the fifth root of 96. And one last one, uh, hopefully you guys could do this one on your own. What's this 4 inside? It was, of course, a 16. And we have 16 times 5 is root 80. Okay. So I want to make sure that you're showing your work the exact same way. I'd like you to have this intermediate step and then get down to here. Uh, make sure you recognize, um, am I in square root world? Is there like an imaginary 2 right there? Or am I dealing with a uh, fifth or perhaps a cube? All right. That concludes this lesson.